Good morning. It's now just about eight o'clock in the morning on Friday the 19th of April, which is Good Friday. I'm Andy and this is my allotment. A little bit of time since the last update. Um, not been down here a huge amount. I thought I'd give you a quick run round as to what's going on so far. Uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, riddling of my old compost piles. I'll take you over and show you what we've got over here. Two huge compost piles, as you can see which all need to be sorted through, riddled, and get the good stuff out to put on the beds. Um, I was using this hand riddler, but it took me absolutely ages to do it last year. Uh, it probably took me somewhere in the region of about four to five weeks to go through all of this, working on it as often as I could. Don't do that again this time. So what I've done, I bought myself uh, a riddling, uh, rotary riddler, which I'll show you later on uh, in another video because I haven't got it out at the moment. But it's basically about the same size as that, but it's metal, stands on legs, and it has a rotating uh, bar in the center, which will force all this rubbish through, um, uh, well, it spins it around, anything small drops through the holes. Um, this is what's left of the rubbish. As you can see, there's loads and loads of big stuff in there, some wood chips and mess with the chickens from the other day. Um, but all of this will be left in there to re, um, recompost over the year. Uh, I've got all of that to put in there. Half of that is going to stay in there, no doubt, and then I've got all of that to do to move into here. I'm probably going to need to put another compost bay on the end of here, because there's no way I'm going to fit all of this riddled into there, because I've got two full ones, and I've got about a third of that which is left to be emptied, and as you can see, I've hardly got made a dint on this one yet. There's just so much stuff in there. It just makes so much rubbish, the uh, allotment, so much stuff for composting, that it's just ridiculous. But anyway, that's the plans for this time. Um, I'm only down here for the morning today because I've got to uh, do family stuff later on today. But my plans are to clear out this bed which had the pumpkins and squashes in last year, get all the ne nettles, the weeds out, etc. Um, do some more riddling of soil and then fill this bed up with some soil because as you can see it's fairly low on that end. What I want to do, do is try and get as, this as high as possible this year um, and plant some uh, good stuff into it. Probably going to put the sweet corn down here this year because with the pumpkins being in here last year it would be good soil. Um, fruit bushes, these are uh, black currants here at the end. As you can see, loads and loads of currants coming on. It seems to be a good year for currants again. Last year was fantastic for currants, and this year looks like it's going to be the same again. Same with gooseberries. And you can see down there, gooseberry flowers coming on. Not flowering just yet, but plenty of them. And I've got uh, a gooseberry bush growing out of the pavement there, which I'm going to move the flagstones eventually, dig that out, and we've got a new neighbour. I'm going to see if she wants a gooseberry bush. Uh, the square foot bed, um, not planted anything into this yet this year because uh, I've been busy getting all the soil in there. But the top end has been done. Um, there's extra. There's about three barrel loads of soil gone into there which has been riddled from my compost. So it's all good stuff. Uh, I've got some perpetual spinach in the middle which is still coming up. I've got some old beets in here which are probably going to be coming out very shortly because they're probably very, very woody by now. Um, over on this bed, this is where I've got the mint and the horseradish. So there's mint in the middle, it's always been surrounded by weeds at the moment. So I'm going to get in here and clear the weeds out again. But I've got uh, four mint plants across the middle here to make a minty barrier, which is going to hopefully spread this way. At that end, there's a comfrey. So when the comfrey comes up, it covers a huge area. So I'm hoping the comfrey and the mint will keep each other in check. They can live in hope, can't I? Uh, then over here, this bit here is horseradish. Now, I'm not sure if this is horseradish coming through or not. So I'm going to leave it for a bit and see if it comes up. I may have lost it. If I have, not bothered. We shall see. One thing that's happened since you were here last is the uh, broad beans have been put out. Now these were in uh, root trainers in the greenhouse for quite some time over winter. So they got very, very leggy and very, very weak supporting each other because they're all stood right next to each other. With the result now that when you put them out they need staking up and canes etc because I left them far too long to bring out but the weather just wasn't right. We've had a couple of frosts since they went out and some of the leaves have turned brown but these are tough things. These will survive and these will keep on going no problems. So I shall just hopefully let these go. Um, and of course there's garlic at the front. Again looking a little bit tatty because we've had a frost but it's garlic. Garlic loves being frosted so I know that's going to be good garlic now. Uh, now this is a white currant bush. Now last year this white currant bush gave me uh, two and a half kilos of white currants from one bush. And looking at the number of flowers on there, this is going to be good again this year. Um, the flowers are already out, there's bees pollinating already at this time in the morning. So hopefully they'll do fine. 
Uh, the rest of last year's leeks are still in there. They've got to come out and then behind it is a red currant bush, which again is dripping in, bu in uh, berries. Not as much as the white currant bush, but there's not as many uh, branches. Um, I'm not sure whether these bushes are going to stay on where they are, whether they're going to be moved at some point. But while, while they're here and not doing any harm, I'm going to leave them there. Uh, this bed has been cleared of weeds at this end, and then we've got carrots in there from the end of last year. They've got holes in them from slugs, they've got um, carrot fly marks on the outside. But when you peel them, they're good. So I'm not too concerned about that. I'm very happy with that one. Uh, right, take it down this little bit. It's a strawberry bed. Needs a good clean out. Lots and lots of uh, dead grass, <laughs> dead grass, dead leaves rather, and a big clump of grass in the middle there. Um, eventually I want to come to look something like this one on that side. That's been cleared out and all the runners have been put in uh, little pots. Uh, there were a lot more of those, but I passed some on to the uh, new neighbour. Um, I'm only going to do this bottom end of the allotment this, year, this time, I think, because it'd be too long a video otherwise. This is my grandson's bed. Um, needs a bit of weeding at this end where we've got some uh, bits and pieces. Um, some raspberry canes coming through here, which we don't really want coming this way, so they're going to be cut out and dug out. And he's got some weeds in there. But uh, he's not been able to help me much this year so far, because he hurt his hand a few weeks ago. And while the weather's been nice, he's not been able to get down here, so um, we're leaving that till he gets here. He's got strawberries in as well. Uh, his strawberries look in a bit better condition than mine do, because we did those before the end of the year last year. So hopefully they'll be fine. Uh, rhubarb, uh, looking really good at the moment, really, really good. I must move that chair off the rhubarb at that end. Um, one thing on rhubarb that you do get quite often is a flower. It normally means that the plant is under stress. As you can see here, I've got a flower there and a flower there. I don't want the flowers because the flowers will take away energy from the plant growing. So what you do with the flowers is you get hold, lie down, twist it and pull off. And that's the flower gone. So same with that one. Doesn't hurt the plant. All it means now I've got some rhubarb flowers for the chickens to eat. And that plant should hopefully start growing better now. Otherwise what we'd have is a great big huge flower spike which looks lovely. And if you want to get rhubarb seeds, let it grow. But I don't rhubarb seeds, I want rhubarb leaves. Well, stalks. So I've uh, decided to get rid of the uh, the flower. Only that one's flowering, the others aren't. There's no flowers in either of these three. And that one, the little two, the two over there, the little one. No flowers in any of them. So just this one's getting stressed for some reason. I don't know why. It did this last year as well. No idea why, but hey ho, we shall see. Um, these big towering things here are blackberries. Uh, tiny blackberries that come off them, so I'm not sure whether I'm going to keep these for much longer. I might replace them with raspberries, but they were okay, and there were lots of them, but they're a pain to pick because they're tiny things. This bed here's got a lot of grass in it, I need to get all the grass out, and I need to uh, clear underneath it. There's a grapevine in the middle, they gave me grapes last year. Can you believe it? <laughs> grapes in all of them. But it was just a lovely year last year, it happens that way. Uh, what shall I show you next? I know, I'll go into the greenhouse. I'll show you inside the greenhouse. The bed over here has got the last of last year's brassicas in it. I keep meaning to take these out. I'll take them out today, I feed them to the chickens, and this bed can be cleared. All right, so take you to the greenhouse to show you what's what's planted and what's growing and what isn't growing and so on. Okay, uh, in here, uh, I've got some buckets there which have got the last of last year's potatoes in them. I've got some sapo mira in there which look like they're starting to grow again, so I need to get those out pretty sharpish. And uh, I've got some um, uh, pink fir apple in a bag underneath there. So I grow mine and potato my potatoes in buckets and bags because uh, I don't want the problem of them growing again next year. Right, this is uh, a herb bed where I've got, uh, let's see what I've got in the front here. I've got some Mizuna, some Rocket, some Lola Rosso and some spinach going from top, bottom, top, bottom. Now this is herb, sorry, this is fennel, caraway, parsley. I'm supposed to be garlic chives in there but never had much luck with those. I've never been able to grow them so they're gone. Um, I only sold these last week. These are all tomatoes and chilies, and as you can see, I've not had much success with them, there's nothing growing as yet. Uh, I also put sweet corn in, and I have one sweet corn coming up at the back there. Now these were only put in on the on the 6th, so these have been in, the, in for about 12 days, 13 days. So okay, two weeks and they're growing. Behind that I've got my, my um, cucurbits, I've got some um, courgettes at the back and at the front we have got some climbing squash red curry which are very very nice little little squash but they're very very tasty right 
At the back there is some Cinderella pumpkins coming up. Uh, I've got some other uh, Atlantic Giants and other pumpkins and other courgettes in there. that were, They were planted also on the 6th. Nothing coming up as yet. And these are oregano and thyme. Um, very, very little happening here. There's a couple of oregano's coming up, no thyme. I think they're going to over water, to be honest. I'll let them dry out because they like it dry. We'll see if it works. These are the rest of my um, cucurbits, which are still waiting to come through. I've got a marrow coming through, which I thought I'd lost, and some um, lots of courgettes and some more red curry. And then on the bottom, I have got some um, cauliflower all year round and cavallo nero on that side. And this side, these are all basil, which is doing well because I've never grown basil. But this year I can do for some reason. So it's great. So, lots going on. These are going to be ready for pricking out shortly. Um, not sure they're quite ready just yet. Um, the little Russell are certainly ready. So I'll take those out and I'll put those in individual plugs. Um, I'll use the big size plugs, the ones that are about an inch square, um, so that they can actually grow on and become decent sized plants on their own. The fennel's ready for coming out, the coriander's ready for coming out. Maybe the parsley, I'm not so sure. Um, spinach is ready for coming out. Uh, the Mizuna, I think I'll probably just plant that as a block to be honest. No point doing that otherwise. But anyway, 11 minutes. That's plenty of time for this now. So, um, thank you for looking around my allotment with me. Um, I hope you enjoy what you see. Please comment below if you like it. Um, if you want me to show you anything in more detail, please let me know. And other than that, thanks very much and I will see you all next time. Bye for now.